Hi, I'm Felix, one of the creators of Needle Engine, a new way to bring your content to the web using the tools and workflows that you already do. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to bring your first project from Unity to the web using our exporter. Needle Engine allows you to build interactive applications using 3D models, animations, advanced materials, light maps, custom shaders, and so on. And on our website, which is a demo in itself, fully built in Needle Engine, you can see some of that. So here we have a 3D scene, we have video. You can export light maps directly from Unity that you've baked with the light mapper there. There's support for bringing custom shaders over and so much more. We're going to be roughly following our getting started guide, which you find when you hover over getting started and click quick start. So before we can dive in, there's a couple of things that you should have installed so you can follow along the tutorial. And these are, of course, Unity, and we recommend 2021.3, which we're going to use in this video, uh, some kind of text editor, and Node.js. The most likely of these you don't have yet is Node.js, which we're using for running a local development server, building your application, and making sure everything is super fast and snappy that you can just reload and so on. If you don't have Node.js installed yet, just pause the video, head to one of the relevant links here, install it, and then continue. There's multiple ways that you can get started. We have a quick start using an installer, which we're going to use in this video. But if you don't like that, you can also start from scratch and set everything up manually. We are going to use the installer for this video. The first thing we're going to do is create a new Unity project. So we're opening up the Unity Hub, select New Project. We're going to use a version of 2021.3, and we're just starting with the regular 3D template. And I'm going to call this Needle Engine First Start. We're going to hit Create. The first thing we're going to do now that the project is created is we're going to make sure that the color space is right. So Unity's templates unfortunately still come with the gamma color space, which is pretty dated by now, and there's usually no reason to use it anymore. So we definitely recommend using the linear color space. And to change that, you can go to your project settings, player, and change the color space to linear. So after we've done that, we're basically ready to import our installer. So I'm going to hand back to our documentation page. We did the first step now, and we're ready for the second. So let's download our installer. And I'll simply click on that to open it in Unity. It's going to open this import package window, which you can just confirm and say, hey, I want to import this. And what the installer does is it's setting up our package registry, which is basically where our Unity packages are hosted so that you can access them here. We can just close that window again. To make sure that everything is properly installed, you may have to refresh your Unity once. So go to Assets and Refresh, or just press Control R. And if nothing happens anymore, then you're ready. You will also see this in the project window and the packages folder because we now have Needle Engine and Needle Exporter installed here and are ready to go. There should be a little welcome window that opens. And in this window, we also have quick links to our documentation and to our support Discord. We're going to click on Begin Setup. And then the first thing we're going to do is we are, we're going to create a sandbox scene uh, to learn a few concepts of Needle Engine. And you can either do this by clicking this button here, or you can go to File, New Scene, and select one of our templates. So we're going to use the Sandbox template today. So I'm going to click on Create. Uh, it asks me where I want to save my template, and I'm just going to use the default folder here, and press Save. And this will create a new scene that is already set up for using Needle Engine and Exporter. We have a little platform here. We have a couple of objects that we can interact with. And this is what we'll be exporting to the web. Next thing we want to do is look at our project hierarchy. 
in scenes that are set up for, for our exporter, you'll always have this export info component here, and you'll have some of these green dots here, which are basically your scene content. This first object has an export info component, which says, where do you want to generate your project? Uh, so for example, by default, this goes to projects and then the name of your scene. The other object here is what we call a GLTF object, which will basically collect all the stuff below it, the objects, the components, the links between them, and export them ready for needle engine. First thing we do, there's this yellow exclamation mark here. So we're just going to click on that big button that says run needle project setup. And what that does is it will install a couple of uh, Node.js packages in the background and make sure that all paths are right and everything's set up correctly. Generally, when you interact with Neil Engine, you'll usually see stuff in the console. Like we're using that pretty extensively to show you logs, show you if something went wrong, if a project setting's not right, and so on. So keep an eye for the console. Okay, now that this is done, we can choose uh, a template to create a web project from. And this may need a little bit of explanation. So basically, when you're working with Needle Engine, you always have two projects. You have your Unity project, and you have a connected web project where your HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that kind of stuff lives that typically goes into making a website. And we're going to use the default template here. There's some hints to get started and to learn more about that. But for now, we're just going to hit generate project here. And this, again, takes a little moment. And after it's done, we'll automatically start a couple of things for you. So for one, this console window opens, which is basically Wita, which is the web framework we're using, uh, telling you, hey, this worked. You now have a local server running, and these are the addresses that you can use for it. We can just minimize that window. We don't really need to look at it anymore. Sometimes it's helpful to see uh, errors or warnings from your code and so on. What also has happened is that we're getting this lovely privacy warning here. So what's happening is that uh, we're opening up a local server and serving your page away over HTTPS. So this is a secure way of doing that. But Chrome has no way of knowing if your local server can be trusted. Of course, you can trust it. It's your local machine. And so you can go to advanced and then just click on proceed. And there we are already. This is basically uh, the same scene that we were seeing in Unity, now exported to the web. And this is already interactive. You can move stuff around uh, and so on. Oh, and to show you a little bit of how the typical development workflow works, we're going to move that window over here. If you have two monitors, this is a great time to use them to basically have your website open in one of them and your Unity project in the other. The general workflow for Needle Engine is really fast. So basically, we can just select an object here, move it around a bit, and press Save. And pressing Save will automatically export your changes and refresh that web page here. So if we're going to take that cactus here and make it really big and save that, then the change is reflected pretty much immediately on the website here. And this is a pretty big deviation from how you're typically used to working with Unity if you want to bring content to the web. Usually, you'll go through a build process where the entire engine is compressed down, packed, and so on. And then after 10 minutes or so, you have your website that you can actually look at. So here, we're much closer at the typical workflows for web development, where people are used to everything being immediate, like changes are live the instant you make them. Now oh, we're going to shrink that guy down again, press save again. And here we are. What's worth noting is that this scene is already multiplayer. We have a XR component in here. We have a networking component in here that you can all inspect to see how everything works together. So for example, the XR component here says, we want to enable WebXR, we want to have AR, we want to have VR, we want to use the default avatar and so on. 
And we can actually test that immediately if we just duplicate that window here and move it over to the side. Then you can see that this is already a network synchronized scene here. Like I can move stuff around. What's also fun is that by default, you can see the other players. So if I'm getting a bit closer here, you can see that little camera floating over there. And same thing the other way around if I'm going to inspect this cactus here, then the other user will see that someone is there looking at a specific part of the scene. What's also synchronized is generating new objects. These two blocks here, you can move around and the things on them, they will duplicate if you drag them out. So this is a great way to get started with simple sandbox builders and the like. And if it becomes too many, you can just use this guy here to run over them and delete. You will find that when you refresh your web page, the changes you did, like objects you created or deleted, are persistent. So the scene stays as you left it. So I refresh again, Cactus is still there. If you want to have a clean state, basically a fresh room, then you can just go to your LL and change something about it, add a number and load the scene again. And you're gonna have a fresh version that nobody has messed with so far. There's two more things that I want to show you in this tutorial. First, we're gonna add a little bit different content and then we're gonna publish this to Glitch so you can share the link with other people. You can either use your own assets or something that's readily available. And in this video, we're gonna use some of the awesome assets from Quaternius, who runs this page and makes all kinds of awesome 3D models under very permissive licenses that can, you can use for your games and apps. And this animal collection has some really cool models that we, that we can use to populate our world more. So I'm gonna to head to the download section here and we're usually using the GLTF format by now and we're gonna check out the alpaca here. So we can just drop this file into Unity and to add it to the scene, we're just gonna drag it as usual. So I'm dragging my alpaca to the content area here. Uh, it's a little bit too big. So we're moving it over to the side, making it a nicer size here. Oh, and if we save our scene, then as before, the website will automatically refresh since we changed something and here's our alpaca. One thing to note is that we can't yet drag him around. And this is because similar to how it works in Unity, interactivity is defined through components in Needle Engine. And you can set these components up the regular way in Unity. You can make your own components later on and so on. So if we click on this cactus here, we can see that it, besides having a mesh filter and mesh renderer, it also has a deletable, so it can be deleted, a sync transform, which makes sure that everyone in the network sees the same thing, and it has drag control, so we can drag it around. So we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna add the deletable, we're gonna add sync transform, and we're gonna add drag controls. And if we save the scene again, the website will refresh. And here's our alpaca. So I think this is now ready. And what we're gonna do next is publish this so you can share it with others. For this, we just need to select our export info again. And if you scroll down a bit, there's a component here that says deploy to Glitch. Glitch is a free and friendly web service where you can create new projects upload them and share them with others. To get started with it, all you need to do is click on this Create New Glitch Remix button here. And what this is doing is opening up Glitch, loading our starter project, and from here, we just need to copy the URL, put that into our project name field back in Unity, and this is all you need to have your own page ready to upload something to. The only thing left is clicking this build and deploy prod button. Prod means production, which means we're applying some compression to the files. We're packing everything uh, so that it loads fast and runs fast. And then we're just hitting that button. And again, this is a good time to keep an eye out for your console area so that you can see what kind of messages are logged here. 
Uh, for example, I do have an old version of Toctix here, so I should probably update that. After this is done, it will launch your new project on the web. And this is now already a fully deployed web page. And to recap, we went from an empty Unity project through installing our packages to deploying on the web in just a few minutes. And to learn more, you can just head to our docs, go to the start page of that. There's an entire content section here that goes deeper into exporting specific things. We are an AR setup, scripting, adding your own UI components with HTML, and so on. If you want to ask about how something works, or are stuck, or need some help with your projects, please head to our Discord, which you find down here in the feedback section. And we have a very nice and lovely community. We have very responsive developers that will help you and make sure you can succeed with Needle Engine. That's it for today. Hope you join us in another video later on and have fun building.